so I don't forget. Um, I'm also the health and wellness coach with Amovita. So I have my hands in lots of different things. Um, and as always, I love hosting these webinars for all of you because I know that these topics are always so, so, so much needed. Um, and of course, having Jen as our expertise is always a bonus. Um, for So most of you who have been to um, our events before, you're familiar with the whole spiel of keeping yourselves on mute um, for the time. But if you do have questions, um, Jen might throughout just invite you if you want to unmute yourself or if you want to just keep all of your questions, your comments, everything in the chat box. Um, I will be, uh, I'll be watching that chat box. So any questions you have, um, if Jen has a break, we can, throughout her presentation, we can ask them then. Otherwise, we will make sure to answer them at the end for Q&A. Uh, please feel free to introduce yourselves, talk amongst yourselves, um, network, share your LinkedIn. Um, we definitely want this to be kind of a community, right? Um, so with that being said, um, for those who will be asking, we are recording this. Um, so we'll be sending a recap out uh, with the recording and with some other fun stuff that, um, that you can keep an eye out in that email. I think that's all. So I will be handing it off to Jen. Thanks, Jen. Perfect. Okay, wonderful. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and get us started here. Um, Jill, can you just confirm that you can see the cover slide? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. And I'm going to close this little thing down. Okay, you can still see it, right? Jill? Oops, I was muted. Yes, you can. We can okay, see it. You're good. You. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, everyone. I'm having um, challenges today. You know, it wouldn't be just a normal, crazy beginning um, of a year if you didn't have some challenges. So, my internet at my house went out, which means I'm using a backup computer connected to a hotspot. So I'm getting all sorts of creative. And it's one of those things that has a tendency to like spike the anxiety a little bit, but we're rolling with it. And if I mysteriously drop off, I'll just join right back in. And Jill and some of the other great coaches on the call will keep you entertained till I come back, should it happen. But <laughs> hopefully everything will run smoothly. So I'm really excited to be here with you today talking about tactics to elevate your leadership in 2021. Now, if you have been to some of my trainings before, you've probably seen one of you know, three, four, five different versions of this pitch because it's a really great topic that we continue to circle back to. But we try to add a different spin to the actual tactics, strategies, skills, et cetera, that we cover. So this one is loaded with some new content, which is really great. A lot of the focus really today is, and I, I've got this sort of added in 2021, it really is about where are you at right now and how are you going to set yourself up for success in the future? And it doesn't really matter from a leadership standpoint if you're talking about just being a stronger leader for yourself so you can lead others, um, if it's just leadership, leadership in more of a philosophical term, if you're actually a manager, like whatever it is for you, we're going to cover some of that today. I really want you to kind of walk away with some of that how do I have that sort of fresh start as I move forward into 2021? So welcome to Amala Vida. Amala Vida is a leadership, career, life, and health coaching company. Leadership is really what we're focused on today specifically. And within leadership, we really do try to work very intentionally with our leaders to elevate them to their full potential. So whether that means we're focusing in on skills that they already have and making them even stronger or using them possibly to leverage or overcome some of their blind spots. But we do want our leaders to not only love their lives, but also kind of create a space where their employees can love their lives too. So we still, in our name, Love Your Life, use that term even within leadership coaching because whether it's you developing something for yourself or becoming a better leader so that you can be stronger for your people. We want everyone to kind of have that love your life mentality and using it in a way that's really good for them as they elevate their skills. So today, again, we'll be talking a lot about leadership and elevation of your own skills. Um, and if you haven't met me before, I'm Jennifer. I am one of the leadership coaches here at Amala Vida. There are a small handful of us. Um, so whether you've attended someone else's event or spoken to another leadership coach before, there are a few of us. My um, experience and background is primarily in corporate. I actually worked at Boeing for about 10 years, uh, but I did leave Boeing in 2014 to start my own business, um, specifically a leadership coaching practice. 
since then, I'm now with Amala Vita for almost two years, which has been great fun to have such a team and have this other sort of great coalition of leadership coaches to work with um, in conjunction with just operating on my own. So I had a chance to kind of work in a variety of different areas. Leadership's always been not only my specialty, but my passion. And hopefully that will come through in some of the conversation we have today, but also just in some of the actions that you take away. And when you get that perspective on what it's like to work with me as a leadership coach, I want you to kind of walk away with a little bit of that knowledge so that you understand what a leadership coach even does and what you would gain from one of those experiences. All right, so today's agenda, um, I've got a quick logistics review that will be some stuff in addition to what Joel's already mentioned. I am gonna touch a little bit on why this matters. Um, we are gonna talk first about assessing where you're at. So I kind of mentioned that in 2021, we're gonna dive into where you're at. We're gonna talk a little bit about goals and then we're gonna talk about getting support that you need. Beyond that, there will be some additional specifics on how I can help you and that uh, Q and A that Jill mentioned if we don't get to any of the questions throughout the presentation. Okay, so logistics. Jill already mentioned the recording uh, will be shared after the call via an email. If you have, whether this is your first event or not, please go to our other events page and enroll in any events you have not enrolled in. There are a number of other leadership events, but also just some other great career, health and life ones as well. So you can um, use that short link there, the bit.ly, which is case sensitive, capital ALV events to get there, or you can go to our homepage, um, alvcoaching.com and click on that events button up at the top and it'll drive you where you need to go. While you're here, I want to really just challenge you to be really present, take notes so that you can walk away with the information that is helpful for you specifically. Um, ask questions, like Jill said, feel free to type them in the chat and we will get to them either midway through or at a minimum at the end. Um, and then I just want to remind people because this keeps coming up in conversations, not only with my clients, but prospective clients, especially at 2021, don't be afraid to think about asking your employer to pay for some of your personal development. And I like to highlight that here because we're specifically today going to be talking about coaching, right? And I want you to kind of put that hat on and think, oh, how could I get my, my company possibly even to pay for coaching if that's the right fit for me? But they might pay for continuing education, certificates, classes, even books, right? So I just want to challenge you to be thinking about that as you're thinking about your own growth and development here for 2021. In what ways can you ask your employer to pay? Typically, they just want some sort of business case or they want to know that what are you going to do with this information that you're going to learn that I'm going to give you this money for? How is it going to benefit me? And if you need any support on crafting something or having that conversation, don't hesitate to reach out. I've got a couple of resources I can provide. All right. So with that said, why this matters. So we are going to be talking about this kind of upfront assess piece a lot. And really what I want to highlight there is one of the most important leadership capabilities is self-awareness. You may have heard this before. You may have not heard this. To be honest, we're not really going to be talking about emotional intelligence and self-awareness much today, but this idea of being very self-aware about what is going on with you is the highlight of everything else that we're covering. So as we talk about assess and how to assess your skills and assess where you're at, that really taps into this self-awareness piece. So, you know, write that down on your paper, self-awareness, question mark, where am I, question mark, emotional intelligence, question mark, you know, those could be some parking lot things, some things for you to continue conversation on or things to go research and think about later. Um, but that's just kind of one of the first things that we're going to be diving into within assess is that value of it being the self-awareness component. So we're going to take some time to assess um, where we are at through our conversation today. But I want you to really rec recognize that the reason this matters is because it gives you this ability to know your strengths. And when we know our strengths, we can leverage our strengths. So um, if you have blind spots, if you have weaknesses, if you have things that you want to be focused on, we can not only draw attention to that through that self-awareness component, but we can use those strengths to leverage and overcome them within the goals that we set in the future. So all of this in theory being those things that are gonna set us up for success. But this ability to really kind of have that self-awareness and that reflection and take the time to assess really will allows us to be a little bit more vulnerable. Maybe we can delegate things more to our team. We can ask for help when we need it. It just sort of starts to open up opportunities. So assess is really important step up front before we dive in and do anything else. You see this visual off to the left. Um, I thought this would be interesting to put in here because it's really kind of 
the model for what we're talking about today, but this is also the framework that we use at Amala Vita for our coaching, this ADIT framework. First step being to assess, really get to know where you're at, discover goal setting, planning, implement, taking action and transition, sort of, you know, moving forward, reflecting, long-term planning, repeat, 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 all of that. We're going to be highlighting the A and the D today, which is really not only where we as coaches spend a lot of time with our clients, but it's where I want you to be reflecting. I want you to be thinking about how are you going to use assessment for yourself? What assessments are you going to use? How are you going to become self-aware? And then how are you going to start to take all that information and transition it into some effective goals that are going to set you up for success going forward? All right, so first thing really is this assessment piece. I've mentioned it a couple of times. There are a number of ways out there in the world that you can um, do some sort of assessment. Your company might have like an internal survey that they already do. Um, this could be something like uh, whether it goes out to all employees or not, but it usually has a tendency to the data roll up to a manager. So you're getting some sort of feedback through a company survey. If you aren't utilizing that as a tool, you know, you are not leveraging all the tools that you have. So if you have access to company survey information where employees have potentially said things directly about you, pull on that and utilize that as a tool to assess where you are. Employees beyond the survey, it could be one-on-one -on -one conversations, but you could also create your own little survey, something that is anon anonymous, or even ask your human resources team, like, is there a way that they could support you in some sort of survey of your team or in an outside facilitator who could do like a start, stop, continue exercise, but something again, where your employees are getting that chance to provide you that feedback that will allow you to say, okay, here is where I'm at in service to these individuals. Obviously, peers and friends, this is an easier one where we can potentially seek feedback on, where we can just ask directly. Um, I always encourage people, if you're going to be seeking feedback, it should be, you know, not question like, hey, can you provide me some feedback on how I am or how I'm doing, but something really specific, especially if you're asking a friend. Like, I would love feedback from you on my communication style as it relates to how I talk to people I don't know, you know, whatever, something where you're getting really deep and specific so that it's much easier for them to actually answer the question. Otherwise, they're just going to say, oh, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Like really ask what it is that you need to know from them. So make sure it's really clear and specific. Online, uh, there are a number of assessments you can do online. There are some free ones. Usually those are those kind of just simple short quizzes. There are some ones that cost money, like even just like a strength finder, for example, strength finder is one of um, my personal favorites. Um, but there are other assessments like that that you can do as well. Even internally here at Amala Vida, like we do um, a Hogan assessment. It's something that uh, we provide to a lot of our corporate clients or anyone who wants that kind of deeper level of assessment. Um, but those things are out there readily and available for folks across the board. Internally at Amala Vida, um, we do a number of different assessments here. We have kind of like an intro assessment, intro questionnaire. We have a couple different versions. And then within the leadership team as well, we have sort of a specific set of deep questions that we ask to help you reflect and have a self-assessment up front. It's one thing for, you know, me to say to you like, hey, how are you at giving feedback? You know, it's really easy to just go, oh, I think I'm pretty good. But with a coach, you can get a lot deeper and ask a question like, tell me, how are you at giving feedback related to this type of person in this type of situation? Specifically, when was the last time you get, did it? What did you say? How did they react? What was their facial reaction? What was the follow-up? What did you, you know? So we can get a lot deeper and kind of really ensure, are you actually giving that feedback that you say that you are? And is it being effect, as effective as it can be? We also do a Leadership 360. And that's one of the things I want to share with you quickly today, because the Leadership 360 is a good tool for that anonymous feedback being collected from an impartial party to find out what are your peers saying? What are your employees saying? What are your managers saying? So I'm going to walk through a sample 360 since that's one of the ones that we do that most of our leadership clients will take advantage of. Um, but with that said, I just want you to kind of take a look at this list, write down for yourself, like what tools could you use to do an assessment and to go maybe a little bit deeper than you would have if you just sat down and said, all right, what are all the things I want to work on this year? Because if you do that, you know, you're just going to brainstorm a list of either what you know, um, maybe it's even a list of things you're already good at that you want to get better at, but you might be missing key blind spots that you didn't think about. Or what often happens for individuals too, is if they are truly, really, really good at something, they don't often even think of it as a strength for themselves. It doesn't come up as something that they need to be 
um, identifying as a, a tool or an ability that they can do to grow for someone else. So kind of having a, that new perspective and someone else to ask, um, you might be able to go a little bit deeper than doing it on your own. Okay, so 360, just really quick, this is a little bit of an eye chart. Um, there's two slides. I just wanted to give you a quick visual of sort of like what the reporting looks like. When we conduct a 360 internally here at Amalavita, we have five key categories, these feedback categories here. So you can see self-awareness being one of them, um, where your peer, your manager, or um, your employees will all rate you. And then you get both an average score from their ratings in addition to your own self, but then they're pooled up in an average here. So what's nice about this is you can compare. So um, my peers, managers, employees, in this person's example, gave me an average score of a 2.5 on self-assessment, but this gal gave herself a 3.8, which is a 34% difference. And for me as a coach, this really creates a great conversation. Like what is going on here to say that um, your folks were scoring you a little bit lower than how you scored yourself? Like what might that mean? The next page where we go a little bit into strengths and opportunities, you'll see some of that highlighted, but that's kind of where the conversation is. When we see these gaps, what does it mean? Same thing here, provides clear and consistent feedback. She got a 4.0, but she gave herself a three. Why do other people think she's doing better than she thinks of herself? You know, again, what does that gap mean and what's going on there? So it just helps generate conversation between us, but it also provides us, you know, a really good starting point. Again, that assessment provides us that really good starting point to know what she should be focused on when she's thinking about those skills that she needs to be working on through the rest of the year. Okay, so I mentioned the strengths and opportunities. Here's just kind of the summary breakdown in for this particular gal's case. Strengths being she does a good job of holding the team accountable, provides direct and specific feedback, um, empathize, excuse me, empathizes with my situation, I feel hurt. But there's a lot of opportunities down here now. And one thing that's really common that we see, well, we'll see something like this, you'll see right here, empathizes with my situation, I feel heard. And then down here, it says opportunities, employees don't feel heard. So we see that a lot where sometimes it'll come in in the strength and the opportunity, it helps to generate a conversation. And usually what happens is this is where um, listening might be one of her strengths, but is she using it and leveraging it in all areas? Like maybe in her, her team meetings, she's empathizing with the group, but in one-on-one -on -one meetings, she's not being really present and she's not hearing them, right? So you can absolutely still have a strength that's maybe not being utilized or leveraged completely in both. And this is a great time where having someone to help dissect this information and figure out what it means can help you really determine what you need to be focused on going forward. Again, for her, it was things like one-on-ones are not effective, um, distracted during conversation, not present, don't get the impression my manager cares about my personal development. This is really good feedback for her that she can actually do something with. So for this particular client for this example, some of the things that leadership coaching would, would specifically go into detail on for her is improving her one-on-ones. I mean, you might not think that that's something that would come up in a leadership coaching conversation, but it does. Um, how do we ask the right questions? Are they deep enough? Am I fully present? Am I actively listening to what my employees need and want? And am I asking them the right questions to drive that out of them? Am I helping them on their career development? Are we having regular meetings? Are they even on the calendar at all? Do we have some sort of agenda or template or structure that we follow some process so that they know what to expect? So these are the types of things that we can spend time talking about, diving in and crafting a plan for this individual that will work for their team specifically. Because as you can imagine, every team is going to be a little bit different. Company's going to be a little bit different and every leader is going to be a little bit different. I mentioned that active listening component, huge for her, that active listening and that act of being present you know, making sure she doesn't have any of those distractions. And is she not just hearing the words someone is saying, but is she really like scratching at that and going a little bit deeper and really empathizing with what they're saying? And does she really understand what it is that they truly need or want, not just making assumptions? Assumptions is one of the, the nastiest things that easily happens with leaders. Let's remove the assumption by making sure that we are active listening, paraphrasing what our people are saying, you know, really using some of those skills. And then building trust, because in her case, it looks like maybe there's a little bit of a lack of that trust, which is probably what's contributing to the low morale, low engagement, and some of those things. 
So this is just an example of how one gal's assessment was able to lead to what it is that she needed to be focused on. And I thought it would be helpful not only to see this so that you can see the value of the assessment, but even just these, some of these words on the paper here, like, is there anything that jumps out to you? Like, wow, I wouldn't have thought about putting building trust on one of the things that I would like to be focused on for the year, but that's spot on for me. That's something I need to work on. So just be kind of jotting some of those things down as we go along in case something really does stand out for you. So think about doing an assessment and then getting that support to figure out how to analyze the assessment and do something with that information. So the next thing we're kind of migrating into is sort of like that doing something, right? So I talked about goal setting. How do we turn all of these sort of opportunities from the assessments into goals? How do we turn this, this giant list that we made where we just wrote down all the things that we really want to work on? How do we turn all of that into goals? Now, everyone has a little bit of a, a different and varied opinion on goal setting and whether, whether they like it, whether they hate it. But the reality is that what gets written down gets done. So whatever format or tool that you put it into, that's up to you. How structured and formalized you want to get, that's up to you. Here at Amalo Vida, we have a number of different tools that we utilize, in addition to every coach, frankly, even using varying processes for goal setting, just to make sure that we have this ability to kind of adapt to what works for the client. Um, but at the end of the day, you need to somehow document what that goal is. If it's just in your head, you are not gonna be working towards it. And especially if it's a number of things, like even just those three bullets on that last list, you're not gonna remember all that stuff, you know, three months from now. And you're, oh yeah, that trust thing. What was I doing around that? Like you need to write it down. So we use a framework called Epic. Um, you can see I put, this is a very wordy slide, so I apologize for that, but you can see I put it all here. Feel free to take a screenshot if you want this right out of the gate. But um, at Amal Vita, we use Epic, which is elevating, practical, impactful, and clear. And what this really means is that you are putting some thought and some intention and some meaning behind the goals that you're setting. I like to share this here because as, again, as you're assessing, I want you to think about how am I gonna write these goals down and what's that gonna look like for me? But I also want you to take a look at this and think about how would this be a great tool for me to pass along to others, to my team? How can my team use Epic goal setting as a new way to think of goals? I think we get so stuck in that box of the SMART goals, especially from like a corporate standpoint, SMART, 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 that's all we hear, right? We get so stuck in that box. Let's break out of the SMART goals box and think about how we can basically do that same thing, but with a different approach and use this epic framework that's maybe a little bit more fun and just sort of twist the process a little bit around on its head. So. I'm just gonna like quickly skim some of the high points, although you can, again, you can kind of see it here, take a screenshot, stare at it later, but really just make sure from that elevating perspective that this goal is motivating to you and inspiring to you. It's not about what others want, but it's about what you want and it uplifts you, you know, it gets you excited. If you don't wanna do one of those things, then don't mark it down as a goal because you're not going to do it. So you need to be really intentional about what it is that you want to do. Does it up, uplift you? Does it inspire you? Does it motivate you? Now, if you're looking at that list and you have build trust is on your list and you're like, it just doesn't excite me. Well, don't write it as build trust, right? Write it a different way. What part of building trust inspires and motivates you? Is it more about um, gaining leverage across different people across your team? Is it more about just communicating with others? Is it more about relationship building in general? Like what is that kind of sub piece of it that does get you a little excited that you can kind of highlight or write your goal around? So just get creative, but make sure that at the end of the day, it does get you excited so that you're wanting to work on it and do anything around it at all. It needs to be reasonable, it needs to be achievable. Doesn't mean you can't set stretch goals. We like stretch goals, we want stretch goals, but we just wanna make sure that we're not setting a goal for something that's just either crazy far out there, like 15 years from now when we can't even feel like we can influence it or impact it immediately, but also that it's not something where I have to make significant changes in order for it to occur. You know, If I am an entry-level employee and I say, I wanna be the CEO by six months, there would take some pretty drastic changes in order for that to happen. And it's probably not very practical, right? So you still need to set a goal that's practical, even if you have that stretch component for you. Impactful, this is one of my favorites because 
it needs to be meaningful and life-changing because really at the end of the day, what's the point, right? Accomplishing this goal brings you closer to that vision. I mentioned that like 15 year plan. If you know where you wanna be in 10 or 15 years, then this goal you're setting right now better have an impact on that long-term goal or what's the point? You know, don't set a goal that does not connect to that long-term vision. We're always talking about connection to that long-term vision. So if I wanna be the CEO, great. What is that impactful goal I'm going to set that will help me get there? Um, last one being clear, this is where you can think a little bit of that like kind of smart framework, meaning we just want to make sure that it can be measured. There's some specifics to it. There's probably a time measurement of some source, some sort, but clear. This is the word we like is clear. Because if you write all this down and you get to that last bullet and you look at clear and you go, well, I like where I was going, but it's not clear. Great. Okay. How do you make it clear? How do you make it clear? So maybe someone else would understand how can I achieve this goal as well? So like if you went to your best friend and said, here's this goal I just wrote down, does it make sense to you? And do you see how you would achieve that? And how would you know you've achieved that goal? You know, put yourself in someone else's shoes or literally ask someone else. And if they read that goal and they go, well, it sounds good, but I, I mean, I don't know. How are you, how are you gonna know when that happens? Or what are you gonna feel like when you get there? If they start asking you those goals and it's not clear enough and you just need to add that kind of last component. So elevating, practical, impactful, clear, 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 okay? Okay, I'm gonna pause there for just a second. Jill, any questions at all? None yet. Okay, perfect, thank you. Okay, all right. Um, I wanted to kind of give you guys a couple examples of clients too, because I do find these are helpful when, you, again, we're at that like assessment phase where what does this mean? I get my assessment. What do I do with this information? I know we're talking about setting goals, but you know, how do I execute? What does it look like? Or what do other people's goals even look like? I think sometimes when we talk about this, like, I want to be a better leader, or I want to be a better manager, it's really hard to put words to that. So just getting some perspective around real people and how it compares to them can be really helpful. So I'm going to give two quick examples. Uh, I think I shared these at one of the last ones, but this is not a real client uh, photo and this is not a real client name. All photos and names have been changed to protect the innocent, um, but I love using the generic name Bob all the time. So I'm gonna go with uh, Bob for him. So Bob really reached out because uh, from his managerial perspective, he was feeling really overwhelmed. Um, he was starting to feel this strong sense of like disconnection to his team because he had that kind of manager feeling like he had to have all of the answers. And this happens a lot where managers think I have to have all the answers. Therefore they get really overwhelmed because they're constantly seeking the answers or creating the information or doing all of the stuff. And by way of doing so, they're so busy that they get this really strong disconnection from their team. They're no longer having staff meetings or they're really infrequent. They're not having one-on-ones. They're not having those genuine conversations or they're not even asking their people what they think because they believe they have to have all the answers. This is a huge chunk of clients that, are, that I work with are all very similar to this. So the types of things that I've gotten the chance to work on with Bob really are, what does it even mean for Bob to be a good leader, not only for himself, but for his company? Um, I like to highlight this because if you're kind of sitting here going like, yeah, this is a little bit me, or maybe there's some version of this, but a really good starting point is to do a little bit of a reflection for yourself around what does it even mean to be a strong leader? So here we are, we're talking about 2021, you know, setting ourselves up for success. What's it going to look like in this year? But what does it mean to be a good leader? And, and are you picking those skills based off of how you feel, based off of other leaders you want to emulate behavior from, based off of what your company has said a great leader is? It, it doesn't matter. Maybe it's a combination of all of those things that could possibly be the case. Um, but the point being like getting really clear about what it means to even be a good leader is a good starting point because then you sort of know what you're driving towards. It's no different than having that long-term goal and then setting that right, you know, impactful goal that connects to that longer term goal. Asking questions of those around him. So with Bob, we got a lot of time to talk about this process of asking deep, thoughtful, genuinely curious questions. So getting back to that point where he's starting to build up trust and build up relationships with his team again and asking them questions that show that he cares. So this is kind of a, a twofold win when we focus on the question thing. So one, he's in Bob's case, he's again, he's like building that trust back up. He's creating that, uh, that relationship. He's building those relationships up. But the second piece is he's also learning about what others need or what others want from him. 
What's fabulous about that is he no longer has to come up with the answers, right? So there's no reason that he can't say, you know, Jill, what is the level of support that you need from me? Or Jill, what's one thing that I could change for you that would make your job easier? Or Jill, you know, you get the point, but he's now asking Jill for her opinion versus just saying, well, I'm watching Jill. She looks burned out. What am I going to do? Oh, here's what I should do. You know, he doesn't have to come up with the answers himself. The, the smart manager will seek that information from those around them. So asking questions for him was really key. The reason I like to highlight this from like a leadership coaching perspective too, is because a lot of us don't really even know what a good question is. And I talk about this a lot on a lot of my trainings. Um, we don't want to ask questions that are just yes, no answers, because that doesn't really get us any information, right? They need to be those open-ended, again, genuinely curious, deep questions. I try to tell people to avoid whys because why typically has a negative connotation. You know, why did you choose to do that? Or why did you make that choice is a much different question than, you know, tell me what led you to pick option A versus option B. You know, that's much more open. You're collecting information. You're curious. You care about their thoughts and their opinions. You're not just immediately setting it up with a why where they're like, oh, great. Here we go. Bob thinks I chose the wrong, you know, op solution again type of thing. So really learning to, to come at it with those right questions can be really key. Um, I always tell my managers, leading questions are typically something we try to avoid, but they have a time and a place. You know, there are times as a manager where you don't really want to tell someone exactly what to do, but you need to help lead them down that path. So leading questions do have a place in management if used properly. But if you find that you're one of those people who asks way too many leading questions to the point to where your employees aren't sort of able to have their own opinions, the next time you're going to do that, just write the question down, stare at it, and think of how can I ask this question in a different way? What can I do to sort of flip this around and ask it in a more, you know, in, intentional way that will allow them to have a response that's not just my dri driven and targeted response? So using like a leading example, um, uh, employee development is really important to us here at Ama La Vida. Um, we ask all of our employees to do employee development uh, plans and craft their five-year plan. Uh, so Jill, would you like to spend your coaching, your time today talking about um, your employee development plan? She doesn't really have a chance to say no because I've queued it up with her that it's important and we all do it. So if she says no, it's like, then what am I going to say? Why? Right. Another horrible question. Right. So instead, there's another approach to that, like a better question might be something along the lines of, um, you know, would you like to focus on your career development plan today so that we can map out some specific goals that are related to not only your everyday work, but your long term plan? And if they say no, then that's fine. You can ask a deep question as to maybe why that might be without saying why, like you can go deeper, but don't lead them down a path where they're forced to say yes. Otherwise they're kind of the bad guy, right? So you have to be careful with those leading questions a little bit. Um, okay. So I kind of touched on a lot with Bob, but the idea really for Bob is he needs to build some more trust. Now, Bob, um, I know for a fact, he, um, it's kind of unfortunate. He had so much alienation from his team that he could not really just like come at it real quick, right? You have to be really careful with building trust is a really sensitive one. You can't just come in and start doing one-on-ones every week and asking a million questions and trying to engage people. Because think about it from like that employee perspective. All of a sudden it's like, whoa, like what's going on? You know, what training did Bob go to? All of a sudden he's engaged. Like it, you'll get a lot of resistance or they will think it's not genuine, which is one of the worst things that could happen as a manager. So Bob really had to take his time, right? He had to go really slow, um, start with just a couple of good questions in a staff meeting, and then start with having some one-on-ones every couple of weeks and just kind of build it up over time. And then using that coaching time to say, here's what's working, here's what's not, here's how I need to adjust, here's how it's being received, you know, all of these types of things and work through those examples. Okay, so that was just a little Bob. Sally, one more example, just real quick. I'll skim through hers a little bit quicker, but um, Sally is kind of what I would say the bulk of, of folks um, fall into, which is something along the lines of, you know, her company gave her some management training, but it's like something is missing, right? She's kind of in, and actually there's, in this Sally's case, she was brand new to management altogether. So it was kind of fun. But what happens a lot is when you get into that like middle management area, it feels like 
like, why is, why are they not targeting me? Right? Like there's these, these hypos that are great at fresh out of college, or maybe there's like a program for C-suite executives or something like that. But it's like, what happened to me here? I am in this like middle and I'm just not getting anything. So it's like, yeah, they gave me some management training, but, but that's it. Like, there's gotta be more, like, I know there's more. So like I said, this Sally's case, um, she was brand new to management, but it happens very much for those people who are kind of in, in the middle as well. So really what can be kind of great, um, very similar to Bob is to do that upfront reflection. So in Sally's case, working to really understand what was the difference between being a manager and being a leader and frankly, why she in her case needed to have both of those skills. She had the management thing done down, like, you know, signing off time, doing performance development plans, all of the logistics, OKRs in the system, like all of those things. But then how does she kind of let that leadership piece shine a little bit more? And what did leadership really mean to her? Taking the time to create a list of skills that maybe she either wanted to cultivate or that in her case, she was given some direct feedback from her a manager on right out of the gate of like, kind of, whoa, here's some things that I'm seeing that you're missing, go work on these. So we were able to pull those kind of in as well and highlight the skills um, that were really relevant to her. So in Sally's case, she spent a little bit more time very intentionally going through those e-coaching modules I mentioned to supplement her skill development. And then the time in coaching is here's how I'm applying that, right? Like here's how it worked out with my team and then bringing real life examples into the coaching of here's how employee A was receptive to this. Here's how employee B was receptive to this. Here's how I'm feeling about my, my presence and my seat at the table. Like anything that was really relevant to her, she would bring back for us to discuss discuss within the sessions. Okay, so that's Sally. I just want to give you a couple of examples so you could see kind of what the difference was there. So um, what do Bob and Sally have in common? And this is very common across a lot of leaders and managers that maybe they just neglect to develop those leadership skills. And there could be a number of reasons why they're not given opportunity or they just haven't sat down and written down what some great leadership skills would be. Um, not asking questions of those around them is a really big one. I, I would really challenge all of you listening in to say, you know, am I asking deep, powerful questions? And am I asking a lot of them? And am I asking the right ones? Am I asking valuable ones? Um, because if you're finding that when an employee comes in your office, I have a problem, I need some help, and you're just instantly giving them the solution all the time, you're not really flexing that muscle of asking questions as much as you can be. Instead of here's your solution, it should be things like, well, what do you think a good solution might be? Or what might be two possible solutions? And if they just still don't know, send them to go out and do some research and come back when they have more information, right? But starting to ask those questions will allow your teams to be a little bit more engaged, take a sense of ownership. Like if you're finding your team is lacking ownership, question asking and just really understanding what their job is and how it connects to the big picture can be a big part of that. Not understanding the needs of others. So Sally was kind of that way just because she didn't know how to show up for her team outside of the, the structural tactical stuff. Bob was definitely that way though. Like he wasn't doing the career development. He wasn't doing any of that, that deep stuff. So taking the time to understand the needs of others. Um, and then really not leaning into their leadership communication. So how can they use the communication skills they have in the most effective way, whether it's through the question asking, uh, any of that kind of stuff with their teams, staff meetings, one-on-ones, any of that. And then not seeking feedback. This is another one I talk with people a lot about. Um, we often say we wanna be able to provide better feedback to our people, but are we also seeking it from our people? And how are we reacting when they provide it to us? Do we wince? Do we cringe? Do, is it tough to stomach? Um, so we can't expect those around us to receive feedback well if we can't receive it well ourselves. Um, so kind of taking that step back, pausing and really assessing where you're at and even asking yourself, do I need to be one of these people who can receive feedback better myself like, is that something I need to challenge myself with before I try to go and, you know, be better at giving it to someone else? So that might be another one to sort of highlight for yourself too and ask yourself that question on like, am I good at giving feedback and am I good at receiving feedback? You know, reflect on that for yourself too. Okay, so in general, you know, one of the last things on the list was what is coaching kind of like, what does coaching do? How does coaching help? How can we help? So it draws awareness to what needs to be worked on, right? So we, here we are, we talked about those assessments that we're gonna do up front. Um, and we're gonna kind of have that little bit of self-awareness to really dig deeper and figure out what are those blind spots? What are those things that I need to be focused in on and kind of go from there. 
um, assisting and clarifying what the right goals would be for those skills or whatever comes out of those assessments so that you can really ensure that you're focusing on the right thing. Kind of, again, it goes back to that like epic model, right? Are we actually focusing on the right goals? Like it's one thing to say, I want to be a better leader. And with that, I want to be better at X. Well, is that even the right goal X or is, should it be like Z over here? You know, so making sure that you're actually focusing on the right goals. Um, a coach will support in the achievement of those goals through coaching. I mentioned a number of times through the e-coaching modules, trainings, consultations, book recommendations, deep and powerful questions, homework, um, just eat trainings like this, whatever might come up that would be helpful. But the idea being that there is a process that we can continue to go through. We, we want that awareness. We want that self-reflection. We want to identify those goals and clarify them properly. We want to set goals that are right based off of what we actually do need to focus on. And then we want to work to achieve those through a variety of means, accountability partners, coaches, whatever all the resources we can potentially use are. Coaching is really great for acting as a sounding board for the leader. You know, I've mentioned this a couple of times where it's a great time to be able to come in and say, you know, hey, here's what's going on in real life. Like, here's what's happening in my situation. And then we kind of take a moment to say, okay, how would you handle that differently? What would you do differently next time? Um, what, what will you do to prepare for this conversation? You know, whatever is kind of going on. All of this to be said that it really allows us to unlock the full potential that someone might have. You know, because you're never going to unlock your full potential if you really aren't even clear what that full potential is. You know, it's one thing to just jot down a couple notes on paper, but it's another to really dive in and ask the right questions to figure out what are those maybe blind spots that I have? Or what's the feedback that my manager gave me that I shrugged off before? Like, maybe I need to go back and look at that feedback again and see where it's coming from. Because maybe it felt a little surface, but is there something deeper there? Or was it deep and I disagreed and I need to go back and really think about why it was said? Was there one event that occurred? Was there two events that occurred? Is it a trend? Like what was going on? So are you ready to kind of like untap, you know, tap into and unlock that full potential? You're going to do that when you take that time to do some sort of assessment, get really clear about what you want to work on, you know, up front. And I hope some of you have done some of that work already, like for yourself here, we're in 2021, like, what is that clarity you've gotten for yourself already? What are some of the skills that you already know you want to be working on? Um, you know, what maybe, what did you scratch at and go a little bit deeper? Like when you sat down and you made a list, I want to work on communication. They said, what did that mean to me? And, and why did I write that down? Like, how deep did you go? How, how deep did you go with for yourself? And did you get to a level where you can kind of really see the value that that deepness is going to have when you set a goal around it? Okay, so some takeaways for you today, I just want you to be thinking about use assessments. So number one tool, use assessments to become self-aware of your blind spots and your opportunity for improvement. Again, whether it's like a 361 with us, whether it's your company's survey, uh, you find a free thing online, you spend some time doing like a self-assessment for yourself where you just reflect on your skills. And then remember you scratch, you scratch, you scratch, you go deeper. Why did I write communication? Why did I write public speaking? Why did I write, I'm nervous in front of groups, like whatever it is, like just keep scratching until you get to that deeper level so that you know you're really focusing on the right stuff and you're having that true self-aware moment of here are my 2021 skills. Um, use that Epic Goals framework to set those Epic Goals so that you really do make sure that they are valuable, they're the right goals, and that you're kind of putting every, all the boundaries and parameters around it to set yourself up for success. And so that a stranger, again, a stranger would read that goal and go, yep, I get it. I see what the goal is. I see how they're going to achieve it. I see how they're going to know when they've achieved it. Like if a stranger can read your goal and it makes sense, you've probably set an epic goal as long as it feels really good for you and intentional to that sort of that longer term, what you're wanting to be focused on. And then of course, use a coach, maybe an accountability partner, a friend, a peer, a manager, whatever it is, but a coach can really help to support taking that assessment, documenting it into goals, and then executing on those goals, you know, and using that time as a sounding board and all of that. Um, all right, so what I would love to hear, and feel free to just start typing some of this in the chat, you know, let us know where you're at. What's one thing from the discussion today that really resonates with you the most? You know, is it, wow, I, I need to do an assessment. Um, I need to discover my blind spots. I need to itch a little bit more at some of those things that I need to work on. 
Um, I am Sally. <laughs> you know, what are those things that really resonate the most for you? So feel free to type some of those in. We'll circle back if there's any um, good comments in there. I'd love to hear too, just like what actions you're going to take, uh, what takeaways that you might have. Um, but throughout the discussion today too, I've mentioned like, you know, a few key, key things here and there, right? Like trust, highlight that, write that down. Um, emotional intelligence, highlight that, write that down. So what are even just like some of those keywords that you wrote down, things you want to think about and go back to for yourself? Uh, I know that this has been a very, we'll just say like a different conversation that we've had in the past, but I really want you to recognize that as you go into, and I'm using 2021 as the example, right? As we go into 2021, but it's whatever, fill in the blank. As we go into a new month, as we go into a new quarter, as we go into a new company, as we go into a new job, like whatever it is, what are you doing to sort of like pause in that moment and level set yourself? You know, I, I always use that term level set. Like how are you level setting yourself right now and getting extreme clarity around what it is that you need to be focused on kind of like, why did it get on that list at all? Really? Like, how am I scratching at it to make sure that it really is the right thing that should be on that list? And how am I taking myself from having just sort of a few generic and boring goals written down to having some goals that are really intentional that are going to make a difference and an impact because I've asked the right people and I'm listening to the feedback that I've been given and I'm going to take that feedback and I'm going to run with it. I'm actually going to do something beneficial with it here in the year to come. So even if you're doing something different than some of the things that I just highlighted, you know, like throw that in the chat too, share with others. Um, but I would love to kind of just hear, you know, a little bit of action around uh, some of that. Okay, so some of this will look familiar if you've been around before, but the ALB team of course is here to help. Um, not only do we have a whole slew of leadership coaches, but we even have J the lovely Jill on the phone, health coach. We have life coaches, we have career coaches as well. So no matter what type of development you or your friends or family are seeking, we have someone that can support you. Today, um, I am offering leadership coaching strategy sessions. So if you were on one of my, um, my sessions last, last week, yes, it was last week, um, I offered out three sessions and I'm gonna do the same this time. I did extend the calendar out into like early mid-February. So between now and mid-February, you can grab one of those sessions. There's only three available. So please be sure to go in and grab them. Um, Jill, if you haven't um, already, go ahead and put that in the chat. I think she already has put that in the chat though. You'll see it again on the last slide in a minute here too. Um, but go ahead and grab one of those three from the, the short links. But in that session is really gonna be a time for us to, to really continue the thought from today. So we're gonna talk about what your leadership goals are. I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of like on the spot coaching for your current situation because I want you to get a feel for not only what coaching feels like, but I do want you to walk away kind of going, oh, okay, like I get it. I can take some action right now. I know, I know what I need to do. I want you to not only feel like you're walking away with a little bit of a plan and a strategy on how to move forward, but something you could actually act upon. I will share with you in that time um, what it is like to work with me specific to your goals, okay? So every coaching experience is very tailored to the individual, so I will share that just so you get some perspective on what that would look like for you. But this would be a good time for, you know, if you've done an assessment, you could bring that to this session and we can talk about what came out of that assessment for you. Um, and these could be any types of assessments. They could be, um, like I said, surveys from your company, um, feedback that you're given, depending on like if you guys have a feedback culture where you get like a printout of feedback from people or something like that. Even if you just want to bring your, your strength finders, that's another good one, or you did like a Myers-Briggs or whatever, but bring anything you've got, a tool or resource with you, bring that with you. Um, maybe even your end of your review where you got feedback from your manager, that can be a really good one as well. So don't hesitate to bring that to the meeting so that we can really take a look at it and say, Okay, so like, what are people telling you? What do you think you need to be focused on? What additional assessments would you maybe need to do to uncover more? But in general, how would we take some of those things and turn them into a plan for you? So we can definitely start a conversation around that in that time if you've got any of those to bring with you. Our coaching methodology, I mentioned this at the beginning, we use this ADIT model. Uh, we will spend a lot of time hanging out in this assess area so that you feel like you have really good self-awareness of what's going on, whether it's feedback that you've been given or feedback that we can go get for you through that 360 process, which is part of every leadership coaching um, uh, program. 
And then we live in that D for a little while, right? Like what are the right goals? How, what does it look like to craft a plan there? Um, how do you make sure that you're connecting that self-awareness you have to that plan? And then are you starting that re process of reflection of, is this the right plan? And then as we start implementing and doing some of these things, is it working, right? So we'll use the coaching to circle back to make sure that we're having conversations around all of that as we go through. Um, I bet, mentioned this already, but uh, the framework, just so you're kind of like aware, we will do a 360. If you choose to, you can skip that if you, if it's not relevant for you or you don't want to. Um, we will do a self-assessment 360 no matter what. So whether you send it off to other people or not, that's fine, but we'll make sure we at least do that self one so that we can use that self-assessment as part of the tool. Um, your coach, whether that would be me or one of the other leadership coaches, will help to craft that plan that focuses on the skills to develop based off of those assessments and other things that you've brought to the table, feedback, past reviews, whatever it is. Um, and then we use that coaching in conjunction with those e-coaching modules to start to elevate whatever those skills are, to start to focus on whatever those skills are, to start to leverage the skills that you have to overcome those blind spots and really just kind of go on down the list and then repeat, repeat, repeat. Some of the things that are common that we like to talk about within sessions are things like culture and vision, deep questioning, coaching individuals and teams, bias in the workforce, emotional intelligence, you know, really does kind of show up differently based off of everyone, um, but thought it would be helpful for you to see just a few of the things that we've touched on with other clients. We've coached leaders from a lot of top industries and there's actually a number, I mean, our number's probably a hundred. This is just the handful that we put on a slide so that you're not staring at tiny, teeny, tiny little logos. So just a handful listed here. Um, here is that link, the bit.ly slash strategy sesh. If you wanna go ahead and grab that again, there's, there are only three spots. So please um, grab one now if it will work for you. Jill will follow up with uh, that link if there are any available in follow-up email, but usually they're pretty much consumed about the time we get off this call. Um, and either way, if they aren't available, I'm here, email me. Um, we have relationship strategists that you can talk to at Ama La Vida. We've got a number of great resources and ways for you to get in to have a conversation with us, but please do try to grab one of those strategy sessions if you can, because it will allow us to just go a little bit deeper into your specific scenario and review your assessments and any of the things that are you know, much more related to you. Okay, so we are at the last slide. Jill, do we have any questions at all on the, um, on the chat today? Um, we do not have any specific questions. There's a question about the membership. Um, so I'll be sharing more information in our follow-up email addressing that. Um, <clears throat> just a lot of comments and commitments, which are really great and take key takeaways. Um, so yeah, Fabulous. good on the questions. What are a couple of the like, um, I don't know, commitments or comments, like anything, anything that jumps out as interesting or even just any trends. Did you see something repeated twice? So that's always interesting to me when we have a couple repeated twice. Um, let's see, repeated twice, um, self-assessment, taking the time to think about my skills. Self-assessment was, was a common one. Um, leading questions. I saw, yeah, self-awareness. Um, more self-awareness, <laughs> realizing that there are strengths and weaknesses that we haven't recognized. Um, and then epic goals, 360 feedback, people are really enjoying. Good. That's good. Great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. I, I that self-awareness and that one, it, it always, um, is a fun conversation to have at a little bit more unique and deeper level like we're doing today, because it's very easy for all of us individually to just say, yeah, you know, I'm probably self-aware. I know myself. Right. And, and it's true. We, we do most of us probably, <laughs> but I would just challenge even the most self-aware person could probably be just that little bit more self-aware. It's about scratching to go just a little bit deeper. It's, I keep using the same example, but it's not necessarily communication. It's something else, right? Like what's the thing that's just a little bit below the surface. Um, and it's just hard to come up with that on our own sometimes. It usually takes, you know, someone to kind of mirror our words back to us, like in a coaching relationship, it takes um, a friend, a family member, a boss, and someone saying like, here's genuine feedback of things you need to improve upon. So um, being comfortable sort of going out and seeking that is really going to set yourself up for success. In addition to maybe getting some support on how do I receive that feedback? Like, I know this is going to be hard. I know this is going to be scary. Um, I'm a little worried something might come up that I didn't think about. So I want to make sure I 
I tackle it appropriately and don't have a weird reaction, you know, so just even spending some time thinking about what that means for you and how you would get that support is really great. Um, okay, so we have a couple more minutes. I know there's been no questions on the content. Does anyone have any additional questions that would be helpful um, that I could answer from either just the perspective of a leadership coach or questions about coaching in general? I mean, anything else that kind of comes to mind, don't hesitate to use these last couple minutes to take advantage and ask a question. And we'll just kind of hang out till we see one pop up or till we get to the top of the hour, whatever happens first. Okay. I'm surprised oh, Jill has got one. Okay, good. I was saying usually oh, here we go. Always, <laughs> always, always, always when it's the last second, right? Yep. <laughs> um, who do you send the 360 survey to? Oh, that's a good question. So it's really up to you. That's kind of my number number one comment. Um, we love to have a minimum of three people respond, which usually means sending it to you know five or something like that because not everyone typically responds. The more the merrier. Um, when someone fills it out, they will select, I am their manager, I am their peer, I am their employee. So those are typically the three kind of categories that it would go to. Um, but I have had clients who it's like, I'm just not comfortable sending it to my employees, but I've talked to my manager and they know I'm going through this, so I'm going to send it to my manager and my peers or, or vice versa, right? So it is very much up to you who you would want to send it to. Those are the three categories. Um, a lot of people will also send it to like clients would fall into like a peer. So if you're like in a sales role and you want to sort of expand out and capture some of the other people that you might work with, clients, suppliers, customers, et cetera, those would all just fall into to peer. So it would be quite obvious to them when they fill it out, but you really can't send it to anyone that you want to seek that feedback from. And this could be a combination of people that you know are going to give you great feedback because it's good to see that too, or people who you know you've had a challenging time with. So it might be nice to have that anonymous feedback from them come in. And it's completely anonymous. Um, when they fill it out, it comes to me, essentially. Um, I take all that information and crunch those numbers to create that file, um, synthesize the comments. So like if, if a couple of people said something, I'll find a way to um, make it a general statement around that, you know, that category that they said. Um, but we won't say, you know, Bob said the following or Bob scored you this or something along those lines. So that's another kind of good thing to remember when you're sharing it with others that you can communicate to them that it is anonymous too. And it takes about five minutes. It's pretty quick. Um, it's just a small handful of questions and the meat really comes in those, those um, comments when they actually put in the, the kind of quantitative information around you. Good question. Awesome. All right, we are at time, but we have one more. Um, how are Epic goals compared to SMART goals? Great question. So like I said, at the end of the day, you might walk away with the same goal. If you use either framework, there's a chance you're gonna walk away with the same type of goal. But what we like about Epic is we really highlight, um, as a matter of fact, I'll click back to the, the slide real quick. But we really highlight beyond just the uh, specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, timely. And we want to make sure that you're setting a goal that really means something to you, that's truly meaningful to you, motivational, um, and the impactful piece too. I mean, I think this is can easily get missed with the SMART goal is that impactful piece uh, because you're not necessarily connecting it to either something that's like a future state um, or something that makes sense for what you're working on right now. So I, there's just more of like, like I mentioned here, you can see with the clear, you can almost think of clear as being a smart goal, but we've taken it to a whole new level saying it also includes being in, in inspiring and motivational um, and feels good to you and is connected to you, not someone else, right? Um, it's also reasonable and achievable and feasible in a realistic period of time, not, you know, we're not saying what period of time, but why not just focus on the near term where you are right now and nothing that's going to take some crazy change in order to achieve and then that impactful piece too so it's really just sort of adding some additional layers to make sure that you're going to care about the goal because you can make a smart goal all day long you know i could sit here and say um, i want to learn spanish by doing two hours um, every week 
um, and I, I want to be fluent by the end of the year. But if I don't really care about that, or it doesn't mean anything to me, or it's not connected to my long-term goal of living in France, then why would I go to learn Spanish? You know, so just because you can write a goal and make it smart doesn't mean it's going to be elevating, pra practical, and impactful. Great question. Awesome. That was all. Okay, wonderful. Thanks, Jen. Right. Well, as always, thanks everyone. Um, Jill will send you out a great summary afterwards. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reply to that email because it truly comes from Jill and I'm on it and we'll both get the reply and ask any questions that you have. Um, and if you haven't yet, schedule your strategy session or send me an email if you have any additional questions. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jen. And thank you all so much for joining us. Um, as Jen said, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to reply to that email. Um, but we look forward to seeing you all again sometime soon. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone.